Why does Dr. Schultz die? One of the more important narrative shifts in Django Unchained happens as a result of Schultz feeling the urge to kill Calvin Candy. So he does. I got to thinking, especially because you could make the argument that this action is uncharacteristic of Schultz. Why does he do it? Contextually, this idea of a diluted moral compass is repeated throughout the film in all of our characters. By no means are Django and Schultz the most ethical people ever, but they serve to represent our dark comedy heroes, so we give them leeway. The first instance of this flaw in Schultz's character comes from the saloon scene with Django, where he tells him he intends to make use of slavery despite his moral opposition to it. To morally bargain with himself and his own self-image, he makes Django a deal to hunt the Brittle Brothers with him, not as partners, but as mutual parties, only because Django knows what they look like. It's not a gesture of goodwill in my eyes, but more a reflection of Schultz's aversion to evil but not doing too much to usurp it. Otherwise, why bother making any effort to give Django any money at all? There are scenes where you can argue that Schultz treats Django like a freeman and a companion, yes. For example, he lets Django choose the iconic boy in blue costume, but is that really such a telling character moment? Even Schultz affirms the idea that they are playing an act, so the costume doesn't really matter extensively. As cruel as the reality sounds, I think Schultz is acting upon many of his own interests for most of the movie. Django, who wants to save his wife from slavery, is led astray by Schultz's vision for both of them. I mean, he quite literally controls both of their fates just because he has the ability to. He has Django trained to become a killer and a bounty hunter, creating this mirror image between them both. But although they are partners now, Django only gets a third of the bounties. It is also shown that although Schultz gives Django his freedom, he can't let him go to Greenville in good conscience because it would affect his conscience if anything happened to him. Or you could go for the base idea, which is that he cares for him with no strings attached. I think at this point, seeing as I've seen this movie about six times, it's kind of naive to think he does genuinely love Django like a son. Speaking of the man, Django has some compelling ethical codes that we latch onto through several scenes. An example of this comes in the form of Django's first bounty, Smitty Bacall. Schultz opens the discussion by taunting Django because he had previously said he would be enthusiastic to kill white people for money. Then Django retorts with his argument, which is that his son is with Smitty. What's interesting about Schultz in this scene is that he sort of acts like the devil on Django's shoulder, trying to rationalize his trade by using the same coping mechanisms that he uses, in sort of a man versus man or us versus them idea. He brings out the handbill of Smitty and says that it's today's lesson, painting a picture for us portraying Django as the student, but for a malicious trade, killing people and selling their corpses for cash. Now I'm not going to argue that Schultz is glamorizing his trade by any means, but he certainly isn't a man who feels ethically responsible for his actions. It's a cash for killing business and that's the extent of it for him. Through other scenes, we come to reaffirm that King Schultz is against discrimination to some level. The Big Daddy scene where they talk about how to treat Django when escorting him shows Schultz nod when Bettina suggests she treat Django like a white man. Later we see him and Django rigging their carriage to kill a bunch of weirdos in white bags and giving Django the final shot against their ringleader. So in both the saloon and with Big Daddy we are given insight into this part of his character. But you know, he still kind of enslaved Django and used him for profit. More of the prevalence of this idea will come to fruition a little before and during their exploits at Candyland. Speaking of candy, I think one of the most important scenes for Schultz actually happens right before they arrive at Candyland. In a confidential strategy meeting with Django, we confirm that Broomhilda is at Candyland, but we also confirm that Schultz is deeply concerned about Django's act falling apart and affecting them. More himself, as he states, in specific, he has no intention of dying in Chickasaw County, Mississippi, USA. What's obvious about this statement is that he does indeed die in Chickasaw County, Mississippi, USA. But also, the more telling part about Schultz is that he calls Django out for verbally assaulting Candy's slaves, but Django counters by attacking the hypocrisy in Schultz. We are simultaneously made aware that Django is still torn up about killing Smitty Bacall in front of his own son, but also that Schultz's code of morals is inconsistent and disproportionate with his line of work. Django defeats Schultz with his own logic and worldview, which in my eyes is the point where Schultz begins to truly examine his own character, questioning whether his humanity has been corrupted or if the world is to blame for this. The scene after this is more self-explanatory in terms of the PTSD thing they got going on, but this is also where we get some more side debate on whether he decides to die as a repulse to Candy or the world he lives in. So my new idea is that Schultz kills Candy as a reactionary gesture and not because he refuses to concede to Candy in the battle of morals and intellectuals. The common idea I think most people can latch onto in terms of Schultz's death is that Schultz is relatively a good guy. He wants to put an end to Candy's madness and in some way become a white savior of sorts using his own skin color to get within close enough proximity to eliminate a more brutal white oppressor. 
It would also be a way to save himself from this horrible person he believes he's become. That's pretty much the basic idea you draw from the death scene. If you want to take it down the path of intellectuals, though, you would see it as Schultz refuses to die as intellectually inferior. As shown by him correcting Candy on Alexander Dumas being black, Schultz is a man who believes that he would rather die than admit he is on the same level as Candy, a metaphor from the handshake of good faith. So intellectual superiority is the only way to live. I find this theory not so interesting because it's not really an idea that's hammered in his character other than in wordplay and mannerisms. What I draw from this scene now is that Schultz is being selfish. He is saving himself from the horrors of the world and from seeing Candy any longer, because Candy is the symbol of that terror. Schultz has simply seen too much, in both his trade and this terrible world. I feel this idea of a repulse to the world makes more sense, because I don't really see moments where Schultz is harboring an obvious or secret hatred for people like Candy. He just seems ready to put it all down for the sake of his own well-being and not necessarily for the best interests of Django. He could have easily shaken hands with Candy and went on his way, but instead Django takes the brunt of his action and is almost sentenced to a lifetime of suffering, while his wife of course is made a comfort girl. So you tell me if Schultz is really in the right here. I don't think so. So yeah, in summary, Schultz isn't dying that honorably. I think his character is still interesting aside from this point, but it's still worth examining. That's about it though. Thanks for watching.